Hi everyone. What I have here is a new camera, or at least new to me camera. It is a 1910-1911 vintage Autographlex SLR. It is a single lens reflex camera. What we see on the nameplate here, maybe a little hard to make out. Um, Autographlex Fulmer Corporation. So this is actually before there was a Graflex Corporation. Uh, this is a I'm not sure if it's the earliest uh, SLR design. I think they were around before even this camera, but it is certainly a very early design. It has some unusual features. I'm going to be restoring this camera and modifying it somewhat. Uh, so on the front here we have, we're missing the leatherette over the lens board cover. This should actually automatically pop open. There's a, a little button here that's a little sticky. So yeah, we have another hidden button underneath that'll lift the whole front door up. And normally, normally it would be in this configuration when you're uh, shooting pictures. I think there's a leather flaps that cover the side. That's your lens hood. Uh, yep. So in the hidden button there, underneath, it just operates its little little spring. This is where the lens board goes. I have the lens board that came with it. It's just a piece of wood that fits in. Uh, you can see the screws have been pulled out of it, and the lens itself is a. See that? Bosch and Loam Zeiss Tessar design from uh, the patent date is 1903. I haven't looked at the serial number yet to see exactly when it was made. It covers a three and a quarter by four and a quarter film plate, quarter plate I guess, and it goes from f4.5 to f32. Uh, the aperture actually, or a diagram rather, diaphragm rather, operates pretty smoothly. It's a little sticky. I think it simply will unscrew. And yeah, we could easily clean this lens up. So yeah, it looks looks pretty clean. Uh, it's a few marks on the glass, but for a hundred year old piece of glass, I'm quite pleased with this lens. So interested to see how it turns out. Uh, let's put that back together. Okay. So and this is the focusing rack. So there's a rack and pinion on the front. Doesn't have much uh, movement on the bellows, but for a lens like that, you probably don't need much, um, especially if it's stopped down. Uh, on the back side here, we have a Primo film pack adapter. This is a Kodak film pack adapter. Uh, it fits on with a little latch there. Uh, this is for a quarter plate, I believe. Three and a quarter by four and a quarter film size. They don't make uh, they don't make film pack pack film like this anymore. They do make sheet film, limited order anyways, in that size. You can also cut down larger film, or you could adapt a different back uh, to go on here. That's probably what I'll do. Uh, one of the things that interests me is instant film. They make Fuji makes instant film, which is the same size. You can see fits almost perfectly in the exposure size here. This is four and a quarter by three and a quarter instant peel apart film from Fuji so I'm, I'm thinking about getting a, an instant film back for this that would be pretty cool uh, or sheet film I could even put a 4x5 back on it with some more serious modification um, yeah so that's yet to come this is like I said an SLR camera which is a little unusual most of these large format cameras uh, I'm use a ground glass to focus and then you place your film so normally there will be a glass plate here focus on but this actually if you look inside has a flip down mirror now the flip down mirror focuses through the top of the camera which will be a little hard to see here put it up sideways has a like a chimney style I guess uh, viewfinder so if you look inside it may be difficult to see yep there you go look at that so there's a ground glass inside that you focus on to make your exposure, you adjust the, you know, the focusing knob while you're looking down the top of the camera, much like a, a TLR box camera, you know, where you look in the top. But this is an SLR, only one lens, and once once you're focused on the top, then the shutter is set here, and it uses a curtain shutter, so it has a, a variety of of slot sizes. Okay, so the wider the slot, the longer your exposure will be. 
So that's a narrower, narrower, narrower slot. And so it's set with a combination of two things. This sets the opening. And there's a small, I don't know if you can see it there. It'll say uh, three quarters. So that means there's a three quarter of an inch slit. And then there is a another dial here that sets the spring tension. So this is a one. If we turn it, uh, we got a two, a three, and the higher you go, the more spring tension, so the faster the exposure. And there's actually a chart right here on the back. Maybe difficult to see, and I'm sorry, it's sideways. But the combination of the spring speed here on the left side, one through six, and then the opening here on the top down to a uh, quarter inch, I think, will set your shutter speed anywhere from 10, one tenth to one one thousandth of a second. So, yeah, it's pretty, pretty fast shutter speed, one one thousandth of a second. And once you have it set, the shutter releases here on the side. You just press this lever down, and there you go, the shutter rolls on past. And then you have to reset here, that locks the mirror in place again. You can then, you know, if you needed to make it a faster exposure, you can then actually again lock it. See, it's dragging a little, so this is timed exposure, or rather open. So you hit it once, and then you would need to, I guess, I don't know how the, how the time exposure works. The, the lowest speed is a little slow there. So yeah, it needs some work. But overall, it's in pretty decent shape. This camera is, serial number is located here. If you can see that, it is hmm, 25336, which looking at some Serial numbers online seems to be 1910, 1911 manufacture date. Uh, it's pretty dusty and dirty. The mirror is, is uh, fairly well fogged. I may have to get that recoded. I need to figure out how to get this apart to get the ground glass clean. Uh, you can see the leather is, is peeling off quite a bit and yeah, pretty frayed. So I'm going to be actually probably, I think what I'll do is take most of the, take the leather off and then you'll have nice brass and wood. So it'll be kind of a little steampunk brass and wood, maybe a, a light s stain or oil for it. And like I said, I have to do something with the back here, find some way to put some modern film into it. Yeah, this will uh, lubricate the spring, or lubricate all the mechanism here, adjust the springs if needed. Should be a fully functioning camera though, just going to take some work. Well, that's pretty much it. Pretty cool. Fire the shutter one more time. Go up to the fastest speed, so that's a pretty narrow gap. And let's set this to uh, six. So one one thousandth of a shutter, second shutter speed. Yep. Pretty cool. Well, there you go. Cool. Thanks for watching.